some of you may have seen the white scrubs that I made with a contrast um, border around the v-neck, uh, the sleeves, uh, and the tops of the pockets. Um, so I'm just going to show you how I did that if you want to have a go. It's a really good way of using up some um, scraps and bits of fabric that are nice but you've not got enough of to make any, you know, a full set of scrubs. Or if the fabric for the scrubs, as is in this case, you'll see, um, is pretty plain or dull, um, it's a really good way of uh, fancying them up a bit. So you'll see on these white scrubs that I made that um, I added uh, a three centimetre border down the V. I just used straight, I didn't put anything on the bias, um, and it's just overlapped at the bottom, crossed over and neatened off in, at, at the bottom inside after it's been applied. It's just top stitched. Um, there's nothing complicated about it around the cuffs and across the tops of the pockets, it's just the same. It's the same band that I use. The only tricky bit is the bit at the back of the neck, um, what would normally be a facing, um, is replaced with um, a contrast band as well. Anyway, I'll show you the pattern pieces as I've cut them, because you do need to alter um, pattern pieces as well, um, just to allow for the contrast band. But first, the contrast band, is this. Um, I've just simply cut it. I want the band to be three centimetres wide. So I've cut this band eight centimetres, which obviously will be folded in half to become four. And then I've allowed myself a one centimetre making. So I'll end up with a three centimetre band. So what I'll do is I'll just fold that and overlock it as I go. I'll do that now. So simply take your strips. I worked out that for one set of scrubs I needed 200 centimetres roughly of trim. So um, I've got a full width. Uh, in fact I've got two full widths here which is way more than that but uh, it was just easier to cut it that way. So there we go, just overlock the edge. Fold it and overlock as we go. Actually, cut in plenty, cut in a good 200 centimetres, uh, uh, way more than 200 centimetres, like, I've got like 300 centimetres here, it will allow me to avoid any joins actually, so it works out quite well if you can cut a bit extra. Okay, so here are my strips in the press. Um, I pre-washed this fabric actually because it's a furnishing fabric for curtains. It's quite lightweight though still, um, but I was a bit concerned about it uh, shrinking. I think it's 100% cotton and also the colour running. So just to be on the safe side, I washed it first, but actually it didn't change much at all. So there we go, my strip's ready. So as far as the pieces go, I'll start with the front and how I cut them. And you'll see it's quite a sort of dull, creamy, in fact it's called stone, this fabric. I'm using the original pattern that I downloaded and I didn't bother to cut individual sizes from it. I just used this. I tend to put the fabric over, trace around one uh, and then use that as a pattern as I go. Um, so I, I've just left them all on one and I'm doing a medium size here so that's a small medium large and so on so you'll see I've followed this second line here and that's the original pattern edge there but because we're putting the trim on um, I've tapered back here and actually just for some feedback recently we've we've heard that the the V is a bit low and I think probably because when people are <laughs> leaning over um, it feels a bit low so rather than taking um, the same amount off parallel all the way around um, I've tapered this so it'll actually have the effect of making this V a little bit higher. And you'll see I've followed around and what I've taken off with the strip that I've got is going to be finished at three centimeters and obviously I've got a one centimeter 
um, seam allowance. If you cut off two centimeters, that'll give you a one centimeter seam allowance as well. So there we go, that's the first piece. The back, similarly. And again, there's the medium line. And two centimeters back from there. But then, of course, this will have a seam allowance. The edge piece that I've cut will have a seam allowance on both sides because you'll need to machine around the. Right, so I'll bring this over, I'll show you. This is the uh, trim edge. And of course, there'll be a seam allowance there and a seam allowance there. So this is five centimeters, and the bit in between is three. So to make that work, you'll see that there, there's two centimeters to be able to create a seam in there. Um, and I've just used the facing pattern piece and measured back. five centimeters from the medium line in little increments marked it all the way around and then drawn and you'll see that that there is the three centimeters border that you'll end up with so those are your back pieces the sleeves and the pockets are pretty straightforward the sleeve Again, um, in fact, I've cut three centimeters off this, I think, did I? Yeah, uh, no, yes, because um, there's the medium line, because there's an, a hem allowance on these sleeves as well, so you can, you can cut a bit more off. It's not imperative that you cut it off at all, but it does, I think they're a bit long without. And then the pockets, that's the, this is the top pocket, the pocket for the top, the big pockets that go here. And again, um, there's an allowance for a big hem at the top that you would normally turn and machine flat. So I've taken the allowance back from there. Okay, and cut it. And then the pockets for the back of the trousers similarly there's the hem allowance at the top and another two centimeters down from there we go so those are your pieces um, so what I would do first is so I would overlock the pieces uh, normally I wouldn't overlock the top of the pocket pieces because you would normally be turning a hem um, but because you're doing this top stitched facing um, edged method uh, you'll need to overlock it so overlock all the way around your pocket pieces um, you only need to overlock the bottom edge of this once you've machined that and turned it do that first I think Sleeves overlock all the way around, and the same for the back overlock all the way around, including the top, and then the front piece again overlock all the way around. And obviously, if you've if you've not got an overlocker, you can zigzag stitch, um, and. This here, if you find that you've not got a very good um, finish with an overlocker right on the very edge, because that, that's the bit that will be the most on show, if you like, inside once it's done, what you can do as an alternative is instead of folding right over like that, bring it back a bit. Just I'll press it to give you a better idea. And then just turn that over the top. Okay. 
and then top stitch along there. And then if you, when you add it in, it'll be like that, so that, that edge will be hidden. And you'll have a much neater finish there. So there's a couple of ways of doing it. But first, I'll just sew around this facing. So you want to machine around there first, snip and turn it. So we'll do that first. Okay, so just simply, a bit like you would normally do on the facing anyway, just machine round in your centimetre allowance. Like that. So there we go, this one's now snipping to the stitch line. And you don't need to go all the way around, just around the curvy bits, I find. Perhaps five snips. And then if you can, you press it open first, wide open first, it helps. to get a, a really neat edge. Try to put the flat of the iron down, just use the point to push the seam open. Otherwise you'll crease all your fabric. And then turn it back. If you want, you can just Just turn it so that the one edge is slightly under and use that at the top so you don't have, any, there's no chance of any of the underside showing through. I tend to just. There we go. So that would be me, the bit that shows. And I'm just going to overlock that and overlock all these pieces. Uh, so we'll do that now. Of course, you don't need to overlock the bottom hems of each of the uh, the front and the back because you're going to hem that anyway. And actually, putting an extra bulk of overlocking on the edge doesn't help, to be honest. Okay. Okay, so I'll do my little piece first. I'll, I'll overlock the ends as well because of the way I finish the, the seams on the shoulders. Dropped all the buckets. Okay, so I've got all my bits now. Um, I'll just show you on the pockets and the bottom of the sleeves how to attach this because that's the simplest bit and then we'll get on to the top. Basically, you turn the press a one centimetre allowance. On all your pieces, this happens to have a right and a wrong side, so I'm being careful to make sure I've got it right. And then the bottom of the sleeve. And then it's as simple as laying that there's your overlocked edge, and lay that over that with a one centimetre allowance, overlap, 
like that. There's your three centimetres. I'll put a pin in. That's I'll chop that off. And then your top stitch right on the edge there. Simple as that. So I'll get all these pieces ready and we'll go to the machine and uh, sew them on. So here's the sleeve piece that I pinned and it's as simple as Make sure you don't overlap too much and keep this nice and parallel. It wanders off a bit, can look a bit. And then stay right as close to the very edge as you can. So I'll just whiz through the rest of these. If you're doing a lot of these, like I did quite a few, the nine sets of the white ones with the trim, I just continued on like this. Give it a back stitch each time you cross over onto a new piece, it helps you to later on stop things from unraveling. And then you can just chop in between then. that off after. There we go. And the bit I've got left here we'll do around the neckline. Okay. Okay, so here are all my bits. I'll just tidy them up. And if you really want to you can take this back to the overlocker and just overlock these ends but I find it doesn't really matter you can do like a double top stitch um, anyway if you need if you want to just to hold these down um, and again on the pockets when you turn it instead of just doing a single top stitch line down there you can do a double one just to reinforce it anyway okay so the v-neck What you need to do first is a snip down here so that you can turn this under otherwise you won't be able to get a nice neat bottom edge now it feels a bit scary doing this but and actually if you were to scribe a line the bottom of the v is quite a long way down don't go right down to that but go a good way down. I would go to about there. Because you can turn and push that last little bit under. And then easy if you turn it over. Like I say, I've got this, I've got a right side to this, so I'm on the back now, obviously. Press that open. When you get down to the bottom, just sort of roll that. So you get all the threads and a neatish point. And then if you turn it back again, easier to see. What you want to do is make sure that goes a good way down <clears throat> and I would allow yourself plenty down here. Don't just go till it's hidden. Don't just sort of do that. Give it another good few centimetres beyond because you, you could do to stitch it afterwards and reinforce it. So I would just cut that, give myself a bit of 
we wait and do two the same. Take it to the machine, you've seen me do it, so I'll just come back and do that. Okay, so same again. Just get a one centimeter overlap. Top stitch down. And allow that to flop underneath. Just be careful you don't stretch this because obviously it's on a on the bias, so just keep it nice and flat. And when you get down to here, if you want to pin this at the table, obviously it's going to be a lot easier. Overlap the other one. Try not to sort of spread it apart. Like I say, keep this the, the front piece as flat as you can on the machine. And then so right over both pieces. Turn. There we go. Now the only other thing I do is on the back here is I just top stitch around the V. You've got to hold that back so you don't stitch through to the front piece. And I just follow the shape of the V. Pull this bit away, so you, again, so you don't catch it. And then just do a couple of back stitches. And that will allow you to trim that excess off without it fraying too much. Okay, so there's your piece back. And then you can just trim off these, this excess. Don't trim the overlock piece, and that's well just trim against the stitch locked edge, so you might as well keep it. There we go. And when you turn it over, that's what it looks like. Give it a press, good measure. So that's the front piece. Now the back piece, a little bit trickier as you're sewing a curved piece to a curved piece, but same principle. And if you can get away without snipping it, do. Depends on your fabric, really, but uh, you'll know if you, if you can't turn it, then you might need to put a couple of snips in, but don't take them right to the edge or else you... Uh, probably going to see them. If you can just do it by stretching it like that, all the better. So then tuck that under there. And then you want to try and maintain that three centimeters. So I'll pin this, make it easier to see. If you do each end first, you can tend to ease in the rest. It can look like it won't go, but it will. There we go. So I'll quickly top stitch that, same as I did the other one.
There we go. We press to get rid of any bubbles and to ease it in a bit. And then the rest, you would just make up as normal, apart from how you finish these bits. So I'll just show you that, but otherwise the rest of it is just made up as just as you would normally. I would ordinarily sew my pockets on this first, but I'll just show you how I would finish these bits, because as you just sew in a standard seam here, normally the facing you would turn the whole face in over and get a much smoother join there, but, and it all hidden inside. Um, but this, it's just too fiddly to do it any other way. So this is a much quicker, simpler way. So I'll uh, just machine it up to show you how I do that. There we are, so you get your front and your back piece. What I find is the shoulder bits are, tend to be not terribly accurate, but you can, ease and stretch this to suit. So if we start off at the armhole with them matched, what you want to do is not finish it like that with these two corners matching because you're, you're sewing off the edge here and you'll have a little weird little gap. So you want to make sure that you've got that overlaps enough that these two where your seams going are matched perfectly so i tend to hold it there and then i'm going to pull just to ease that any difference in lengths out and then keeping all these edges flat And then because you've got this seam, obviously isn't going to be very comfortable, even if you press that open, it's not going to stay very well. So I just flat machine over the top of that. Do the other side first, and then you can... Okay, so if you open that out, press it flat just with your fingers, and then just simply take... 20 seconds. Just top stitch on the face so you know it's going to look okay. If you stay on the face, on the um, trim edge, it tends to look better than you wander onto the, the main fabric. So there it is. And then you've got your pockets, big pockets on here. And these are for the trousers. And I'll probably do a, the tie um, inside the, um, the waistband. I'll probably do out of this as well, just do a thin strip. Um, as like a binding for a tie, so it all matches in nicely. And the sleeves. There we go. Well, I hope that was useful. Pretty simple, nice way of using up all your bits and pieces. Nice way to have a bit of fun. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was useful. Thank you, goodbye. <laughs>